page now. The next speaker is Thiago Macedo. He will speak on structure of local whale modules for MAP super algebras. So please, Thiago. Okay, thank you. Um, I hope you all can hear me well. Um, yes, we do. If you cannot, please. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Yeah, if you cannot, uh, if there's any problem, please uh, let me know as soon as possible. I am not seeing the, um, the the Zoom screen or anything, just the presentation. So interrupt me if you if you need anything. Um, yeah, let me start by thanking the organizers of this uh, the summer school. It's it's been it's been a real pleasure to to participate in this uh, school and. So many great lectures, and so and also thank you for for inviting me to give this talk. So I'll give um, a talk on on well, this is the title: structure of local vial modules for MAP super algebras. And this is based on uh, joint work with uh, Mateus Brito and Lucas Calisto, um, who are professors in Brazil and in the Federal University of uh, Paraná and Federal University of Minas. And you can see um, the whole um, paper on archive. Um, it's submitted, but we don't have a final response yet. Um, yeah, so let me start with um, just um, explaining basically what we did. So this is this is um, actually the the, the the beginning of the paper. So um, this is the actual title of the paper. Um, and what we did was we studied this class of modules, which we call um, Chari and Venkatesh modules. Um, and they are modules for the current superalgebra SL12T. I'll explain what this is in a minute. Um, and I'm not gonna actually define Chari Venkatesh modules just because it's uh, maybe too technical for this um, talk. Um, but the important thing is that Charlie Bakatash modules, they um, cover um, several several modules that are important, like greater local value modules, which is the focus of this um, talk, and truncated bio modules and the Mazur type modules. So, um, so that's why we ended up uh, working with um, in this degree of generality. But I'm going to focus on, on, in this talk, I'm going to focus on um, local value modules. And uh, the important thing that we, the, the important result here was that we obtained basis, um, then dimension character formulas for, well, tri and attached modules, but in particular for um, uh, greater local value modules. Okay, so let me, um, so that's what we did. So let me start by telling you what each one of those things are. So we begin with the, the Lie super algebra here. So um, SL12 is, is the, the fine dimensional simple uh, Lie super algebra uh, consisting of, well, three by three make, matrices here. And all the coefficients are um, complex numbers. I, I, I didn't say that, ex that explicitly, but everything I'm gonna say here is over the complex numbers. You could you could uh, do the same thing for uh, directly directly closed field over critics zero, but I don't think there's much point in doing that. Um, so yeah, so it's three by three matrices um, with uh, complex entries and the uh, super trace is zero, right? So, so this is a Lie super algebra with the uh, super commutator. I'm not sure if I should define the super commutator, but um, it's similar to the commutator for Lie algebras, AB minus BA, except that um, you, you have the, the parity sign um, involved there. And and so this is the even part, and this is the odd part of the, the super algebra. 
And then uh, SL12T is just the same thing that uh, Professor Bagaman just talked about. It's just the polynomials, um, the, the Lie algebra with, as if you change the, the, the base field, right, to, to polynomials. So it's kind of polynomials with coefficients in, uh, in this um, Lie super algebra. And this is a Lie super algebra with the, or at least I'm going to con consider it to be a Lie super algebra with the obvious uh, structure. So you take the the super bracket of or the super commutator of matrices here and just multiply polynomials here. Um, I have never thought about whether or not there were other uh, structure of Lisa Proud was here, but just by seeing uh, Professor Vigaman's talk, I just thought, well, maybe there is. I, I've never thought about it. So anyway, this is the this is just this, just the obvious structure, um, su uh, super bracket here and product of polynomials here. This is comm commutative and everything. So, um, and this is all in degree. We consider all of these to be in degree zero. So. The grading here, so it's just the same thing as here. So we have polynomials here and here, and then uh, this is even, and polynomials here and here, they are odd. That's, um, yeah, that's just the obvious thing. So why do we consider SL12? This is the smallest simple Lie super algebra um, whose category of finite dimensional modules is not semi-simple. So uh, why is this important? Because when you replace SL2, SL12 here for a Lie, a Lie algebra, a simple semi-simple Lie algebra, um, everything that I'm gonna say in this talk um, is, is well known. Um, it has been um, developed by by Chari, uh, Vijayanti Chari, and, and her collaborators for over two decades, I think. And um, so, so this is well known. So the the, the important feature of, of simple Lie, Lie algebras, not super algebras, but Lie algebras, is that their um, category of fine dimensional modules is semi simple, meaning that well, I mean that every extension splits. Um, so, 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 so several, um, so, so several things. Um, so, so this non-splitting uh, implies that you have certain phenomena that that doesn't happen in in, in the algebra case. And SL1 choose the smallest case where this, these phenomena happen. Um, so that's why we chose SL12. The case S OSP 12N. Um, so it's a least super algebra again, uh, OSP 12N. Um, so for this case, the category of fundamental modules is semi-simple, and it has been, it, this has been dealt with by uh, Dennis Coase in, in, a, in a paper of his, a recent paper too. And, and then also why we, there's a question why we uh, we're interested in, in current these super algebras because they are related to affine super algebras. Uh, if you want to think, so in, in the, in the non-super case, right, this is, um, Katz Moody is known as Katz Moody um, Lie algebra of affine type. So you have a you have a realization of uh, I'm calling G hat here um, of this Katz, Katz Moody Katz Moody um, Lie algebra as the loop algebra plus a central extension plus a derivation. And in the in the super case, the um, Affine superalgebras, uh, if we consider them to be this kind of superalgebras, um, then you can see that there is a, a current uh, superalgebra here inside of the loop. So 
I'm going to talk a little bit more about this relation, but uh, this is the reason why we're interested in current Lee superalgebras because they because of their relation to affine superalgebras. Okay, so now let me talk about the modules. Uh, so just for simplicity, I'm going to denote SL12 by G. Um, this, in this talk is just to simplify, but many of the things that I'm going to construct, are, construct here are actually um, also true for any um, finite dimensional simple Lie superalgebra. But I'm just going to consider G to be SL12 just for this talk. So consider um, the universe developing superalgebra, U of G. I think someone else has already defined this, but you can think of this as the uh, tensor um, superalgebra on G, right? So we have the, the field C and then plus uh, oh, or direct sum G, direct sum G tensor G and so on and so forth. And you mod out by the relation that is um, that gives you basically the, the super commutator, right? Um, so this is uh, an associative um, super algebra. And the important feature of this associative super algebra is that, at least for us, is that the category of G modules is equivalent to the category of left U of G modules, um, Z2 graded. Um, so, so basically we're kind of identifying G modules with U of G modules. So that's basically what we are doing here. And I'm gonna consider U of G as a G module via the adjoint uh, representation. So the adjoint representation of G on, on itself is just the, the, the super bracket. And you extend that um, to the tensor product um, because this is a half um, super algebra two. And, and then you, it, 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 you just uh, induce it on, on U of G. Um, okay, so, so this, is, this is a module for G. And then in order to construct uh, the modules that I'm more interested in, I'm gonna have to decompose G into a direct sum, which is called triangular decomposition, which is, so, so, so you can think of this as kind of lower tri uh, uh, di di diagonal and then upper and lower triangular matrices. But, but the, the composition that I'm gonna make here is not exactly like that. So, so the H is going to be the diagonal. So this is the Cartan subalgebra. N plus is not exactly going to be the upper triangular matrices. I'm going to uh, replace X this term here with this one. So N plus is going to be are going to be the matrix. It's going to be formed by the matrices that have the the red um, entries non-zero. Or possibly non-zero. Every other entry is zero, and then minus. Again, it's almost lower triangular, except that I'm swapping these two. And and B is going to be the the Cartan plus N plus direct sum of N plus. So this um, here gives you a direct sum decomposition of G. And then when you tensor this direct sum decomposition with um, the polynomials uh, in C of T, you just get a, a direct sum decomposition of the current superalgebra. So you get uh, N minus tensor C of T plus um, H tensor C of T plus N plus C tensor C of T. I'm gonna put these two together. This is just B tensor C of T. And then when you pass um, to the universal enveloping superalgebra, the direct sum becomes a tensor product. So this is the, the important decomposition that I want actually. So the decomposition of the universal enveloping algebra of the Lie current Lie superalgebra G of T 
into a tensor product of the n minus and b parts. Okay. And I'm going to use this decomposition to um, induce modules. So we start with, and these modules are called Verma modules. So we start with um, linear functional on the on the diagonal or polynomials on the diagonal part. Um, so the dual here is actually functionals, like linear functions, right? Um, okay, great. And then you extend, so C of Psi here means that this is, this here is a one dimensional, oops, this is a one dimensional module. So a copy of C where the polynomials in, in the Cartan part act just like this functional tells them to act. And the n and the n plus polynomials on the n plus part just act trivially, so it just it's just zero. So this is actually a module for b of t, or as I said, I'm going to identify modules for g and u of g. So I'm going to identify modules for b of t and u of b of t. So this is a module for b of t, and then I tensor this module with this module here which is just a new person developing algebra. So this is the Verma module or a Verma module. And uh, another way of looking at this module is by um, giving it a generator and uh, some relations. So it's not, it's not hard to see that um, the ver this ver module is generated by the vector one tensor one and one tensor one here means let me go back one in u of g of t and then tensor one of c right so this is one tensor one it's generated by one tensor one subject to the relations that so the n plus polynomials on the n plus part act trivially on this vector which is basically a consequence of the fact that it acts trivially on this on this one here, on the second one. And the polynomials on the Cartan part, on the H part, they act just like the linear functional um, psi. Okay, so this this is this is um, an, another um, description of this um, this Verma module. So it's generated by one vector, so it's called cyclic, right? So it's um, cyclic, a cyclic um, G of T module where the N plus polynomials in the N plus part act trivially uh, on, the, on this vector, and the H part acts just by a scalar. So basically, what's left to act here, um, let's go back. So it's so this part's already taken care of, so all is left is the universal enveloping out action of the universal enveloping algebra of the n minus polynomials on and the n minus part. So, so that's basically what it is. It's a kind of a copy of the universal enveloping algebra of n minus of t. And then to define the, the, the local bio module, I'm just gonna give, get um, define it as a quotient of this Verma module. So, so again, I'm gonna take psi to be a linear functional on, on, on the on the on polynomials of, of the Cartan part. So the local via module W psi is going to be generated by a vector. I'm, denot I'm denoting W psi here, but it could be any thing. Subject to the, the following relation. So the polynomials on the N plus part, again, acts as trivially. The H part acts via the scalar uh, determined by the, the psi, the functional psi. And then we add another relation, which is um, which is that the y2 acts uh, new potently. So what's y2 here? 
uh, I'm going to have to go back to the matrix. So I choose this um, is the, the matrix with uh, everything uh, zero and this entry equals to equal to one. Okay. So, so this condition here implies that um, these local power modules are fine dimensional. Okay. Um, now this is this is an important thing that um, which shows this triangular decomposition. If we had chosen the most obvious triangular decomposition, which is like uh, diagonal, upper triangular, lower triangular, then the this condition would not suffice to guarantee the fine dimensionality of of local power modules. So this is uh, something I um, we we showed um, Lucas, myself, and and Ifan Bax showed in another paper. Um, so so this is the reason why we choose this kind of weird triangular decomposition. Um, so it's kind of technical, but um, but it it guarantees that local via modules are fine dimensional. So 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 these modules they are fine dimensional, as I said. They are um, they are they are weight modules. Um, I'm not going to actually define that, but um, their highest weight, meaning that uh, the n plus part acts trivially on the on the, on the on this highest generator, and um, and the h, the Cartan part acts acts as um, a scalar. So so that's that's kind of one of the important features of this um, of these local power modules, and also that every fine dimensional irreducible module for the current Lee super algebra is a quotient of, of one of those. Um, and then there's more. So why, um, so, so again, why have I modules? Well, the, the whole thing began with um, Charlie and, and Presley um, defining Vial, local vial modules for loop algebras on, on a, in a paper from 2001. So they realized that those modules that they defined were related to certain irreducible, um, they sometimes also called vial modules for quantum affine algebras. So they realized that by studying local vial modules for loop or extended loop algebras could give you information about the these reducible modules for quantum affine algebras. And then um, Chari and her collaborator, collaborators went kept working on this subject, and they realized that by studying Vial modules for current um, Lie algebras, they could also obtain information about the quantum, the modules for the quantum affine algebras. So the whole thing kind of began as like quantum modules for quantum affine algebras, then modules for loop algebras, then modules for uh, current Lie algebras. And then we took a step further and studied modules for current super algebras, Lee super algebras. So this is this is basically the, the motivation of of why we, we we study these these modules. And why are they called vial modules? It's because they are in the composable modules they're not irreducible. And this is um, characteristic that happens in I think the first time it, it showed was in um, algebraic groups or Lie algebras in characteristic, uh, positive characteristic. And there they're called biomodules. Um, 
so so yeah so as as um, I said earlier and then earlier than that professor uh, Wegemann said there is this vials theorem that guarantees that if you have a finite dimensional simple Lie algebras uh, Lie algebra over a uh, field of characteristic zero every finite dimensional module is um, is either irreducible or it's, it's it's completely irreducible, meaning that it's either irreducible or it's reducible and you can break it into direct sum of irreducibles. For least super algebras in positive characteristics, this is not true anymore. So via modules are, an ex are examples of those um, modules which are are reducible, sorry, are indecomposable and are not irreducible. Um, so, so, so then the, I guess people just kept carrying the name. But, but an important feature that we, uh, at least, um, like about this, these modules that they are related to um, to the geometry, to to line bundles on, on on algebraic varieties. So the the actual reason why we started this this paper uh, that I'm representing here is that we wanted to um, try to prove, and we expect this to be true, that these local var modules they are actually um, Global sections, uh, global sections of a certain line bundle on some algebraic variety. As I said, this is true for Lie algebras or algebraic groups in positive, in well, um, simple Lie algebras and simple algebraic groups, um, reductive. This is also true for the quantum case. I think this is due to Anderson, Polo, and Ben. And this is also true for current Lie algebras without the super. And this is due to Braverman and Finkelberg. So we'd like to do the same thing for um, super, super algebras, Lie super algebras. And just a, a quick word on, on Charlie and Katash modules to uh, kind of finish this introductory part. Um, yeah, so Chari, Vinkatash modules, they, I'm not gonna define them. Um, so they, I can give you an idea of what, what they are. So they are, they are still fine dimensional modules. They're quotients of local via modules. And so, so basically you define them by by adding more relations here. So that's basically what you, what you do. And then this so they, so they kind of interpolate between these local via modules, which are kind of universal, and the, like the, which is like the biggest one, and the smallest ones, which are called um, generalized cuts modules or reduced sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they, these I'm going to define generalized cut, cuts modules um, towards the end of the talk. So, so, so they kind of interpolate between these two kind of extremes, and so that's that's why they are interesting. But um, so, but but the, the the whole thing becomes too technical, and decided to not present them. If you understand what I'm doing, what I'm presenting here today, maybe you look at the paper and you can go like, okay, this is just yeah, easy to understand now. At least that's what I hope. Okay, so 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 this is the introductory part. Let me get to the to the details. So 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 this is the, this is more technical. So I'm going to start fixing some notation. So I'm going to fix this basis for SL one two. Um, so x the axes are upper triangular matrices, the y's are lower triangular matrices, 
and the H's are diagonal matrices. Um, I can go back to the picture to kind of show them. So x1, x2, x3, y1, y2, y3. And the h1 is basically when a is 1 and everything else is 0. And h2 is when a is minus a is 1 and, and these a is 1 and d is minus 1. Everything else is 0, including a plus d. OK, so it's um, upper triangular, lower triangular, and trigonometrics. So this is a basis for SL12. I'm going to need this basis to um, do other things. So we, um, as, as I said, psi, um, let's, let's assume that psi is a, is a, is a function on, 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 on polynomials on H. Um, H T star. So I'm going to denote by lambda the restriction of psi to H. And I'm going to assume that psi extremely on the uh, on this maximal ideal where uh, generated by T basically. Okay, so whenever you have a T, uh, when it's not one, then psi is trivial. Um, in this case, the local value modules, they become graded. Um, this is not a necessary uh, condition, but it makes things um, easier. Um, and there, then there's one result that we uh, can prove only under this assumption. So I'm going to, so I'm going to fix this and I'm going to assume that, um, oh, I'm going to note uh, the, the the number uh, psi on h1 by lambda 1, psi on h2 by lambda 2. And I'm going to assume that, well, lambda 1 is a complex number, of course. And lambda 2 is a positive and a strictly positive uh, integer. Okay. This is important to guarantee um, fine dimensionality and actually non vanishing true. OK, great. So from now on, I'm going to start identifying uh, functionals with their values on h1 and h2. Um, you, you guys are going to see this in a bit. So, so OK, so he, here's the main result. Um, so the greater local value module w psi, I'm, again, I'm assuming all those things that I've just said, admits a basis formed by the, the, these, these vectors here. So let me explain what they are. Let's begin from the right here. So you have polynomials on, um, actually, actually there should, there should have a W here. I forgot to put the W. Sorry, everything here is acting on the W on the WC here, I forgot. So yeah, so there's W psi here, and then you have polynomials on Y3 uh, with power C1 to CL. And Y3 is, an odd um, element. I can go back, show you that. Just remember, so y3 is here. So these are odd, and this is even. So y3 is odd, x1 is odd, uh, y2 and x2 are, are even. Well, x3 is odd, y1 is odd too. So going back there. So you cannot repeat the c's. The powers of t, because if you repeat, you just it's kind of a exterior algebra and they vanish. So, so you have to have c1 uh, less than c2 and so on and so forth, and you can't have more than uh, lambda 2 or you have to have less than lambda 2 um, factors here. And then you act with x1 tensor powers of t, and again the same thing, but except that. For each one of these y3s that you had add here, you have to delete one of the xy's. And then you have the y2s, which are the even ones. So you can repeat the powers now, but every time you repeat the power, you have to delete one. Okay, so this is basically the, the basis. And then using this basis, we can cal calculate the character. 
um, and the dimension. Okay, so the dimension is of W psi is four to lambda two. Lambda two, remember, is, is the value of psi on H2, which is a positive integer. Um, and this character here is, as I said, I'm gonna identify the um, functional with their values on H1 and H2. So this is the character on H1, character on H2, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna go back to this formula later and I'm gonna explain this a little bit better. Um, but this is the character formula for this uh, local biomodule. So how do we prove this? Okay, so in order to prove this result, I have to um, define, as I said, it's going to get in technical, uh, fusion product. Um, so if you have a G module, and I'm thinking of the module for the least super algebra fine dimensional one, that's L12, okay? And a number, a complex number, you can define the evaluation module uh, VZ uh, to be. So, so this now is going to be a, a G of T module. And it's just going to be like, evaluate the polynomial on Z and then act with the G, okay? It's just the most obvious thing you can do. Of course, you, you have to uh, extend this by linearity and stuff. So this is called the evaluation module and then if you have a bunch of evaluation of, of G modules and a bunch of numbers, you can just get take the tensor product of the evaluation modules. So if these um, numbers are uh, distinct, uh, pairwise distinct, and these modules are cyclic, meaning that they are generated by uh, one vector, then this tensor product is also cyclic. This is not hard. This is not really hard to show. Um, and I can kind of give you the idea of the proof, but or maybe not. But the the reason why we need these coefficients to is these numbers to be different or pairwise distinct is because well, what what's the what is the goal here? The goal is to show that you can start with one vector um, here um, and always go back to a, a, a fixed one. Uh, with, you can start with any vector and go back to a fixed one. Um, so the, the, the reason why you have to have these uh, distinct uh, complex numbers is because the, the, the way you go back to the, the fixed initial one, um, it depends on on a, on, a, on, a, on a scalar scalar multiple, um, and this this scalar is um, depends on the determinant. Um, and if these numbers are equal, they, this determinant is zero. So I'm not sure if I actually proved anything, but but anyway, so this is cyclic. It's not too hard to show. And then from from this cyclicity. We can define um, a filtration of, uh, on 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 this tensor product. So the way we do this is, so to note the cyclic generator of V i by uh, capital V i by by small V i, and then you just consider the powers here, and uh, and that's the that's the filtration. It's not really hard to show that this is a filtration of. Um, a, uh, uh, increasing filtration on on the tensor product, and then because this is an increasing filtration, you can consider the associated graded um, module. So remember, these V i's are G modules. Then you, when you add the z's here, they become G of t modules. So when you tensor, you get G of t modules. Then when you filter, the are still G of T modules and the associated graded is a G of T module. And so this associated graded module is called fusion product. 
and this is a g of t module which is graded so it's basically graded by powers of t and the last the last uh, ingredient that we need um, that i need for uh, in order to 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 explain the 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 main result is the definition of generalized cuts modules. So you're gonna you're gonna realize that this is pretty similar to viral modules. So for each functional on H on the carton part without the polynomials here, um, such that H two again uh, is is a positive integer, you define the the, the generalized cut module to be the one generated by one vector against cyclic, uh, such that the upper triangular or n plus part, not actually upper triangular, but the n plus part acts trivially, the h, the Cartan part acts as by a scalar. And, uh, and you have the this uh, integrability condition here. So y2 um, is new potent. So this is really similar to vial modules, except that we don't have the T's here. And, and in fact, they are, they are actually uh, related. So, so if you have, again, pairwise distinct complex numbers, and um, I'm gonna come back to this capacitor later. So the result is that the local vial module is amorphic to the fusion product of a bunch of cuts modules evaluated at distinct um, numbers. And the, important, the only thing that is important here is that these kappas here, kappa one, kappa two, kappa lambda two, they add up to lambda one, which is the value of psi on H1, okay? So again, as I said, Earlier, I'm identifying the functional here with the value on the of the function on the on H1 and H2. So, actually, this kappa one comma one is a functional uh, lambda such that lambda on H1 is kappa one and lambda on H2 is one. So, observe that for each one of these. Cuts modules, generalized cuts modules here. Well, the kappas can be whatever, but as long as they add up to lambda one. But the the value on H two is always one, and then when you add them up, you just get lambda two. Wow. Um, so this result is kind of what um, enables us to obtain the main result. So let me just go back to the main result and explain uh, how is that. So let me begin with the, 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 the part C. So dimension of W psi is four to the power lambda two. So if you go back to this isomorphism here, we know we can prove, we've proven the paper that the dimension of this um, cuts module, or if each of these cuts modules is four. Um, so this is dimension four and four, four, so four times four times four is four to the power of lambda two. So this is what it is. So this is part C. Part B, the character of the loop psi is given by this formula. So this part here in parenthesis is actually the character of the generalized cuts module. Um, so going back, so this cuts module with zero and one here. So if you replace kappa one by zero and keep the one here, so the character of that module is this one. So you just keep kind of multiplying them together to obtain lambda two of them and the kind of rest, we just collect them here. And then since we have dimension and character formulas, to prove that this is a basis, it's not too hard, right? Because, oh, I forgot the W here again. Because you either have to prove that it's uh, linearly independent or generates whatever it spans. Um, so we actually prove that this, um, these uh, monomials 
uh, acting on W psi, span uh, W psi. It's a bit, a bit technical. Yeah, it's a bit technical. And um, we use a certain filtration and stuff, but so I'm going to give you a, a whole lot more detail about this. Um, again, you can look at the paper if you want to see more details. But 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 the fact that we have the, the dimension um, makes this this proof the part, proof of part A easier. So we just have to prove that these monomials span uh, the local var module, and then uh, because the, the the if you just count the amount of uh, it's not hard to count this. Um, you just see that the the, the amount of uh, elements here is four to the power of lambda two, and then and there you have it. So yeah, so this is so this is the, the main result um, of our paper um, in the context of of local high modules, and then we go on to prove um, more general results about the more general charging bank attached modules, and um, and then we specialize them to a, a, another uh, class, two classes of modules. Um, but again, as I said, this is more technical, so I don't want to get into it. Um, that's 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 what I wanted to to show you. Thank you for research. Thank you, Thiago. Is there any question? I had a comment. Yes. Um, so, in in your um, talk, um, the um, while theorem appeared, and uh, uh, you mentioned it, uh, that it came also up in my lecture. So uh, in, in some instances in uh, mathematics, for example, in knot theory, it's very important that the um, uh, category of um, G modules for G, a semi-simple Lie algebra, uh, uh, category of finite dimensional G module, is semi-simple. Yeah, and uh, this plays a big role in, in certain uh, instances. So uh, in your work, it, it, you go beyond semi-simplicity uh, by choosing to work with super algebras, yeah, superly algebras. It, actually, what we will see at the end of the week is in, in the Leibniz world, yeah, you also go beyond semi-simplicity, yeah, what what Lode and Pirashvili showed that the category of Leibniz bimodules over a simple Lie algebra is not semi-simple. Yeah, it, it has x dimension equal to two. And uh, together with my student, we generalized this then to, um, to, uh, to simple Leibniz algebras. And so, uh, this hints on some relation, yeah, very vaguely between super algebras and Leibniz algebras. And let me just say, um, uh, I presented to you one uh, two-dimensional Leibniz algebra, which is kind of uh, Leibniz Heisenberg type generated by two elements E and F, such that the bracket of F and F gives E. So this is also a super Lie algebra, yeah. Because in your, in your um, Jacobi identity, all the three terms are just zero. Yeah? And so you can interpret it as Leibniz or as Lie super. Yeah? And uh, then give degree to E and F. Uh, yeah? So in F, it should be, I think, uh, even. Yeah? But it should be odd in F uh, and, and even in E. And, yeah? So there are some interesting links between Leibniz and Lee Super. This is just a comment. Yeah, no, this is a very interesting comment. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess you could think about that. Yeah, thanks. One more question. Well, if not, let's thank the speaker again.